Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have episode 5 of my bookshelf tour series and that is going over my entire Shakespeare and other plays section of my bookshelves. This not only has Shakespeare plays, it does have plays by other authors as well, but it is mainly dedicated to Shakespeare, which I just... I adore the bard so much. Um, I actually didn't read any Shakespeare plays in 2021, but I definitely want to change that in 2022 because I love Shakespeare and I, looking back, I couldn't believe that I didn't read one Shakespeare play. It's just so unlike me. I do have every single Shakespeare play. I do have a bind up of all of his plays, but I do also have other um, standalone Shakespeare plays as well. And certain plays I have are in my Russian literature section as well. Also, if they come in a different edition in a collection that I keep together, because I do keep um, collections, like different editions of books together, I do have like Hamlet, A Midsummer Night's Dream right here in the Pan Macmillan Collector's Library editions. You guys also were recommending me in my last episode of my bookshelf tour series. It was my children's classic section. You guys recommended me The Secret Garden, which is one of my favorite books, and I do have it, just not in my children's classic section because I have it in the Macmillan Collector's Library edition, so I keep it with those editions, and that is also actually going to be the next episode in the series. It's going to be every single edition of Macmillan Collector's Library, which I can't wait to go over because they're one of my all-time favorite editions, and I love them so much, and I just want to show you all of them. They're all so beautiful. Anyway, today is going to be all about plays, and... I'm just very excited because I love reading plays. I love finding different adaptations of plays. It's such a wonderful format to read and I can't wait to talk to you about them and to show you the plays that I have on this specific shelf. I will be going over more plays when we get to different editions like Penguin Black Spines, Pan Macmillan Collector's Library Edition, and I do have all of my Russian plays in my Russian literature section. So we will get to all of those later. But anyway, um, let me know if you like reading plays, what your favorite plays are, what is your favorite Shakespeare play if you have read Shakespeare, I would love to know. So anyway, I hope you enjoy seeing all of the plays I have on my shelf. Okay, so this is my shelf overall. If you hear any weird noises, I just want to say that is Willow because she is acting like a crazy psycho dog um, and is clawing at my rug and if you hear any strange noises, that is just her. So I hope you don't mind it. Um, so yes, anyway, back to plays. So up until here, we have non-Shakespeare plays um, here actually. I do have a Shakespeare play here and Tales from Shakespeare here, but these are non-Shakespeare, this is non-Shakespeare, but everything else is Shakespeare, so it's mainly a Shakespeare shelf. I will get closer and show you every single one. The first play I have is Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot. This is a tragicomedy in two acts. I have heard so much about this play, especially from one of my friends, Anna. She talks so highly of this play, and she mainly wants me to read it very badly, and I really want to read it as well. I just... I keep prioritizing other books and I need to stop doing that um, and just finally read it. So I'm very excited to read this. I know it's incredibly bizarre and I don't really know what to expect. I just expect to be confused, but in a good way. So that is Waiting for Godot. The next book I have is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are Dead. This is by Tom Stoppard. This is a play inspired by Rosencrantz and Guildenstern from Hamlet. Hamlet is my favorite Shakespeare play, and I actually haven't read this yet, but I want to do a reread of Hamlet, and then right after rereading Hamlet, read Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead, because I think that that will be really funny um, and really fun. So, very excited to read this one. Next, I have... Our Town by Thornton Wilder, and I actually haven't read this one yet either, but I have seen an adaptation of it. The next play I have is The Glass Menagerie by Tennessee Williams. Again, I haven't read it, and I really want to. I haven't read any Tennessee Williams before, but 
I've heard incredible things about his writing and I have a feeling that I'm going to love it. I also really want to read A Streetcar Named Desire, but I don't have that one in my collection, but I am very excited for both of those. And I really don't know too much about The Glass Menagerie, so I'm excited to read it and find out. Then the last non-Shakespeare play is over here and that is a new acquisition to my bookshelf and that is Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? The stunning play that has become a classic in our time by Edward Albee. And apparently this has nothing to do with Virginia Woolf. It has Virginia Woolf in the title, so I'm very curious. I have heard wonderful things, of course, about this play, but I've never read it before. I found it recently secondhand at my library's used bookshop, so very excited to read it. And maybe if you guys could tell me in the comments out of all of these which one you'd be most interested in me reading to help push me finally read one of them. Now we are going to get into Shakespeare. So the first kind of non-Shakespeare Shakespeare book I have is Tales from Shakespeare, and this is a book that's actually meant for children. It's short story versions of Shakespeare plays. It's not all of them, so this is what it looks like. That illustration is from King Lear, but those are all of the plays that come in this collection. The Tempest, A Midsummer Night's Dream, The Winter's Tale, Much Ado About Nothing, a bunch of his um, major plays. What I like doing is whichever play I'm reading, I will read the short story version first, and it really helps me understand the story's content if I'm very new to the story and I don't know much about it just to get me introduced to it because I feel like it really helps my comprehension um, and my understanding of the play when I read it. I have a whole video on my beginner's guide to reading Shakespeare for fun video. That's from ages ago but it still stands. All of those tips I still implement in my own reading of Shakespeare so I recommend you watching that if you want to get into Shakespeare um, and to enjoy actually reading Shakespeare. So that is a wonderful book that I use quite often. And then the next ones we are going to start getting into actual Shakespeare plays. The first one I have is from the beautiful Pelican Shakespeare and I just love these editions. They're so cool. This is The Merchant of Venice. I actually haven't read The Merchant of Venice. I found this edition secondhand and I love these editions. They're so beautiful. I don't know why, but I love having a million different editions of Shakespeare plays. I think that they're so cool, the designs are so interesting, and each different publisher includes different information, different ways that they format the plays. All the added contents besides the play is really interesting to look for in different editions. So that is the Pelican Shakespeare. Then I have this Signet Classic of King Lear. I love these illustrations. I have a few of them. This is more of a modern one. These are a bit older, which I love these so much. They are that beautiful like pen line art ink illustration with a bit of color as well. King Lear is not one of my very favorites, but I do really, really like it. But I was expecting to like it more than I did when I read it. The next one I have is Troilus and Cressida, The Winter's Tale, and I think this is going to be my next Shakespeare play. I want to read it very, very soon before it actually becomes spring because I have loved the stage direction, Exit Pursued by a Bear, for years, but I've never actually read the play that that stage direction comes from, and it comes from A Winter's Tale. Then the next play I have is my favorite, favorite, favorite Shakespeare play, and that is A Midsummer Night's Dream. This is my favorite, one of my favorite editions as well. I got it secondhand from an online seller on Instagram, Fox Used Books, and I get so many of my plays from, from her. This is just one of the funniest, most wonderful, most imaginative, so enchanting, so gripping, so engrossing. I adore everything about this play, and if you want to start with any Shakespeare play, if you haven't read Shakespeare at all, I would definitely recommend watching an adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream or listening to it while reading it. Just A Midsummer Night's Dream. Please read it. Please watch it. Please enjoy it in any capacity that you can. But it's my, my absolutely favorite, favorite play ever. Then my favorite tragedy is Hamlet. And this is actually one of the oldest books that I own. This is Shakespeare's Tragedy of Hamlet, edited by William J. Rolfe. And this exact edition 
is actually from 1891, which is so cool. I found it secondhand at my local independent bookshop, which actually unfortunately closed a few months ago, and I'm still heartbroken about it. Absolutely beautiful. Probably one of my favorite books that I own. Then these blue books are from the Yale Shakespeare, and these I also found at the same bookshop that I found this one at. So the first one that I have is The Comedy of Errors, and this is another Shakespeare play that I have yet to read, but I'm going to keep saying it. Very excited to read it. Hope to read it soon. That's what with all of these plays. All's Well That Ends Well, As You Like It, Titus Andronicus. These all look the same. They just have the Yale Shakespeare on the cover. Published under, under the direction of the Department of English at Yale University, which I love these so much because they remind me of Rory Gilmore from Gilmore Girls. You guys know how big of a fan I am of Gilmore Girls, and these make me feel like Rory Gilmore when I, uh, when I hold them. The copyright is 1926. They're so cool, and they have wonderful, um, notes and different contents, which I just really appreciate. Moving on, I'm going to move you guys over and show you my Folgers Library editions. These are the editions. You can see the ones that I have read quite a lot. I haven't read these two yet. So this is As You Like It, Twelfth Night, The Taming of the Shrew, I was actually in a stage adaptation of for my senior year of high school in my English class, which was a very fun experience. I played Bianca. And then this is Much Ado About Nothing, A Midsummer Night's Dream Again, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and King Lear. I love these, first of all, because they look so beautiful next to each other. I love this gold section. These are so wonderful, approachable, great for students, as well as great for people that are new to Shakespeare because they have detailed explanatory notes. This is how I introduced myself to Shakespeare, and I'm so glad I did because it's really, really helpful. Let's take A Midsummer Night's Dream because it is my favorite, as you guys know. It has a little section from the director of the library, and then the contents are an edit Editor's preface, Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream, reading Shakespeare's language, Shakespeare's life, Shakespeare's theater, the publication of Shakespeare's plays, an introduction to this text, and then you have the play, and then you have text of the play with commentary, and you have textual notes, as well as further readings and key to famous lines and phrases. But when you actually read the play, it's really helpful because you have the play on this side and then you have modern definitions of certain words on the left. Let's say there's a word that maybe has a different meaning in the time of Shakespeare, like the word cross. We're all familiar with the word cross, but it does give you the context that the word is in in the play. Like the phrase, spare your haunts, avoid the places you frequent. I think our phrases that we are all familiar with, like a haunt is a place that you frequent, um, and but spare your haunts. So it's just really helpful when there might be a phrase that you're unfamiliar with or it's in a different context in the play, they will define it for you. There is also the wonderful publication of the No Fear Shakespeare editions. On one side is the original Shakespearean language, and then on the other side is a direct modern translation. So it's like Old English and Modern English next to each other, so that it's very approachable for people new to Shakespeare, but I really love the Folgers libraries. I love the rainbow colors. I love like the textures that they put on the covers. I don't know, they just look so beautiful together and I love them very much. So I have read all of these except just Twelfth Night and As You Like It. I have read Taming the Shrew, Much Ado About Nothing, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, and King Lear. To rank these, just these, I would say A Midsummer Night's Dream is number one, number two is Hamlet, three is Romeo and Juliet just because I love it so much. Just the lines the beauty of it. I think it's, it just changed literary history in so many ways, and I love it so much, even though it is so overdramatic, but I, I just love how it's so overdramatic. Much Ado About Nothing, Taming the Shrew, and then King Lear. I feel like I need to reread King Lear. I do have this little wind-up toy of Shakespeare, which 
I actually got at the Metropolitan Opera House when I went there to see Jane Eyre at the ballet. In their gift shop, they had a bunch of Shakespeare memorabilia because they do a lot of Shakespeare ballets. And I got a stuffed doll of Shakespeare and I also got a wind-up Shakespeare. This little card is actually from the bookshop that I got my Yale Shakespeare's. And then this Phantom Mask is actually from the Phantom of the Opera on Broadway. I went to see it with my best friend for my birthday. So October 11th from 2018. Um, she surprised me with tickets to see it on Broadway. She came and visited me while I was in school in New York City and she stayed with me at my apartment and then she surprised me with tickets to go see the Phantom of the Opera. I'm just so grateful for that experience and so grateful for her. So Mia, if you're watching this, I love you so much and I look forward to maybe going to more Broadway shows together in the future. Now the last things I have on this shelf are these editions of the complete works of Shakespeare, so I will move you over just so you can see them a little bit better. So like I said, these are the complete works of Shakespeare. This is, volume one is the comedies. This is from Classics Club. This is all of Shakespeare's comedies. Volume one should go here. Then volume two is histories. Like I said, I've never read a history before. I do want to read his histories eventually because I want to read every single Shakespeare play in my lifetime. I don't know, do you guys have any recommendations for which history play I should start with? I would really appreciate that. Um, so those are all of his histories. And then we have volume three is dedicated to all of his tragedies. Those are the complete works of Shakespeare that I have. These I mainly read from if I don't have the play individually, then I'll just read it out of one of these. Which I like that they're separated because it's... I know some complete collections of Shakespeare are gigantic, and I like that these are a bit smaller and easier to handle. Um, so anyway, those are all of my plays, especially Shakespeare plays, that I have on this shelf. This is the one that I was talking about, A Midsummer Night's Dream. This is the Pan Macmillan Collector's Library Edition. It is my all-time favorite. It is just so beautiful. Like, look at that cover. We have the gold foiling, and then on the back we have bottom, which I just, I just love so much. The course of true love never did run smooth. I quote this play all the time. <laughs> I am that annoying person. Um, I just love it. Please read it. I actually wanted to read it because of Dead Poet Society, which is one of my all-time favorite movies. A Midsummer Night's Dream is performed in Dead Poet Society, so after watching that, that's really what made me want to get into Shakespeare, and that's what made me really fall in love with it. So thank you so much to Dead Poet Society for making me fall in love with Shakespeare, and especially A Midsummer Night's Dream. So yes, those are all of my plays that I have on this shelf. I almost forgot to mention my newest addition to my play collection, and that is Man of La Mancha. This is written by Dale Wasserman, lyrics by Joe Darian, and music by Mitch Lee. This is the play adaptation of the story of Miguel de Cervantes writing Don Quixote, and this is one of my favorite movies with Peter O'Toole and Sophia Loren. Peter O'Toole is one of my favorite actors and he plays Miguel de Cervantes and Don Quixote in the adaptation. Like I was saying before, I do purchase a lot of my books secondhand from a wonderful Instagram used bookshop called Fox Used Books and that's the shop where I got The Midsummer Night's Dream. That shop is where I found this edition. I saw Man of La Mancha and I was like, oh my god, I need it because I love Don Quixote and Man of La Mancha, the film adaptation of the play, is one of my favorite things ever. I look at that cover, I love it so much and the text and everything about Man of La Mancha is fantastic. Highly recommend you watch the film adaptation, but also I'm very excited to read it because I've never read it before. I've only um, watched the adaptation, but it's the music is also incredible, so highly recommend. Oh, is that Dulcinea's song? Oh my god! One of my favorite songs is Dulcinea, and I just, I just landed on it. It was faked. I can fit it right in there, so that's perfect. That is my entire 
collection of plays that I have on this shelf. I would love to know what your favorite either Shakespeare or non-Shakespeare play is, maybe even a favorite adaptation of that play. I love getting new recommendations. It's just so wonderful to give recommendations but to also receive recommendations. So next episode, like I said, is going to be dedicated to my Pan Macmillan Collector's Library editions, which I am so excited to go over because they are, I want to say, my favorite editions, but I don't know, that's a big claim. They're like a top, in the top three of my favorite classics editions, so I'm excited to talk to you about them and to show you all the ones I have. I hope you have enjoyed this video and are having a wonderful day, staying safe, happy, healthy, and I will see you very, very soon. Happy reading. <laughs>